Welcome to Let the Quran Speak and our series, Misunderstood Quranic Verses. I'm here with Dr. Shabir. Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. We are looking now, uh, we're still in chapter two, Dr. Shabir. There are many misunderstood verses in chapter two, it seems. And the verse we're looking at is 23. And it goes something like this. If you doubt what we revealed to our servant, produce a chapter like it and call upon your witnesses other than God if you are indeed truthful. So I don't know how you feel about that translation, Dr. Shabir, but maybe you can tell us um, what the verse is yeah, about. Yeah, the translation by itself is fine. And by the way, if you allow me just to make a side comment, uh, it, there's nothing particular or peculiar about the, the second chapter of the Quran. Okay. Um, it, it's, it's just, for one thing, it's a long chapter, so it has many verses. And naturally, some of these verses have been misunderstood. The other thing is that uh, as the classical commentators have done, uh, once they've explained something uh, with reference to the second chapter of the Quran, they don't have to explain the same thing again when uh, the same theme recurs in other chapters hmm. of the Quran. Hmm. So let's say there's a misunderstood theme uh, and a verse in Surah 2 is representative of that or, or touches upon that theme. So we'll discuss it now, uh, but it's not a peculiarity of this Surah that this particular Surah has been misunderstood. It's just that that theme has been misunderstood mm -hmm. and we're just dealing with the verse from Surah 2 as a representation of that theme. Okay. All right, so tell yeah. me about this verse. So, so this verse now is one of several scattered throughout the Quran in which uh, there is what is referred to as the Quranic challenge. The Quran is challenging other people to produce a book like it. Uh, this is in response to the naysayers who are saying, oh, this book is just, you know, from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, so it, it's not, not from God. And the Quran's answer is that it is from God. And if the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, were to try to forge anything on his own, God would not allow that to happen. But in any case, you look at this and see if you're able to, if you say the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, forged it, he's just producing it on his own and then saying that this has come from God. Okay, you try it. See if you can do something like that. Mm -hmm. Now, what precisely is this challenge that is mentioned here? It is mentioned in the 10th chapter, is mentioned in the 11th chapter of the Quran. Uh, so many, so many different chapters of the Quran. The challenge was taken in classical uh, Quranic commentaries to mean that the Quran is of such a high standard of eloquence in the Arabic language that uh, it is not possible for. Uh, uh, somebody else to produce something like it. Mm -hmm. This could only be produced with the uh, help of God. Uh, some others have added that uh, it's not only the linguistic aspect of it, it is also the fact that it speaks about the past, it speaks about the future, it details knowledge that could not have been known to any human being at the time. It also has a way of penetrating the heart and soul of the human being. This is God's uh, knowledge of, you know, the uh, psychology of people and how to appeal to them and win them over with persuasion and, and so so they, they think it's a combination of things and it's the holistic, uh, like it's the whole of the Quran, not just simply one aspect of it of various facets. In modern times, we also add to this, uh, you know, statements of the Quran that seem to touch upon uh, what we are discovering now in modern science. And we say, okay, how could this have been known? This must be a revelation from the Almighty God. And people have uh, taken a mathematical angle to the Quran. They've seen that things are lining up mathematically in the Quran, numbers of verses, numbers of chapters, numbers of words in the Quran, the number of, of number of times uh, a particular word is used that seem to have significance as if it was deliberate and planned, even down to the number of letters sometimes we can see that the number of letters seem to be deliberate, like, and, and this, uh, you can't credit it to a coincidence, it's so specific and there's so many and interconnected. Uh, so all of these point to uh, a divine intervention and assistance uh, as the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was delivering his message, there was an over overarching power, uh, an omniscient being who was making sure that the Quran comes out uh, the way it does uh, to us today. Coming back to the challenge itself that is mentioned in this verse, the verse says basically in Arabic, If you are in doubt about what we reveal to our servant, uh, then produce a 
a surah like unto it mm -hmm. uh, if you are truthful and call your witnesses besides God. Uh, but uh, if you, you do not do it, well, and you will not be able to do it uh, or you will not do it. Then uh, be aware of the fire that has, uh, whose, whose fuel is human beings and stones. So what I would add here finally to uh, like, why did I say that this is a misunderstand, a misunderstood verse? Mm -hmm. And why is it important that it should be understood? It should be understood properly. Well, the gist of it, uh, I would add, is that uh, the elsewhere, the in, in the 10th chapter of the Quran, in the 16th uh, verse, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, is uh, directed by God to say, فَقَدْ لَبِثْتُ فِيكُمْ أُمُرًا I have lived among you a whole lifetime prior to this. Do you not have sense? So uh, the, it seems to me that what is being stressed here is the psychological angle that uh, from the point of view of human psychology, uh, it, it doesn't seem reasonable to take an honest person like the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was known to be from his whole lifetime of uh, the people experiencing him and his ac activities and so on. For him now to tell a lie like this and say, okay, it comes from God, whereas he knows that it's just coming from himself. And, and, and now the ball is put back into the court of the naysayers. If you think that this is possible psychologically, try it yourself. And, and, and if anyone, a reasonable person ponders this for a moment, you realize that this is something very difficult to do. Like how is, a, a, is a, an honest person going to produce a writing of his own, his or her own, and they're going to say, this has actually come from God, knowing that it is not from God, it is just simply from themselves. So to me, this is the crux of the matter, that the, it is a psychological angle that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, so from a psychological point of view, could not be the, product, uh, the, the, the author of this Quran. It is a revelation given to him by the Almighty God. So, Dr. Shibu, why do you think it couldn't be a linguistic miracle? Well, it could be all the other things as well. Okay. It could be linguistic, it could be scientific, it could be mathematical, and, and it is all of those. Hmm. But, but at the time when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was saying it, when he was reciting the Quran to the people, this was the issue at hand to me, and uh, Allah knows best. All right, we'll leave it at that. Thank you, Dr. Shibu. You're welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Muslim Media Hub, the new home of Let the Quran Speak. Here we spread positivity and good. We help people experience the beauty of Islam and uh, help them appreciate and understand Muslims. This beautiful building we purchased at cost $2.3 million. Yeah, we've already raised a third of that money and with your help, inshallah, we can pay off the rest. So we're looking for people who can give $1,000 each. If you can be part of the select group, that's amazing. Otherwise, just uh, please give whatever you can every dollar counts it's our collective responsibility to share the message of islam with our fellow human beings please help us continue this good work it's a sadaqa jariya something that will continue to be a benefit to the muslim community long after safiya and i are gone <laughs> <laughs> please support our work at muslimmediahub.com your support is zakat eligible and tax deductible may allah bless you and your loved ones today and always assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum